In the following presentation, I will be discussing the Clinical Evaluation of Language Fundamentals Preschool, 2nd edition. CELP P2 was published in 2004. It is the second edition and it was published by Pearson Education Incorporated. The authors are Wayne A. Sickward, Eleanor Sinnell, and Elizabeth H. Rigg. A complete kit including the examiner's manual, 25 record forms, and two stimulus books retails for $525. The intended population for the battery is children ages 3 years and 0 months to 6 years and 11 months. The purpose of the exam is to identify a language delay or disorder through comprehensive testing of language skills of preschool age children who will be entering an academic setting. P2 includes an examiner's manual, stimulus book number 1, stimulus book number 2, the record form, checklists including the pre-literacy rating scale on the descriptive pragmatics profile, and the concepts and following directions stimulus sheet. Standardization of CELP P2 was developed with a sample size of 800 subjects, with an age range of 3 to 6 years. Gender division was 50% male and 50% female. Geographic regions sampled include North Central, North East, South, and West. Racial and ethnic characteristics include African American, 15%, Hispanic, 16%, other, 6%, and white, 62%. Parent education level includes grade 11 or less, 16%, high school, 29%, technical school or one to three years of college, 31%, and college or postgrad, 24%. The sample included some bilingual subjects, but English was the primary language of all participants. Subjects had to be able to take the test in a standard manner without modifications, and subjects were not currently diagnosed with behavioral or emotional disorders. Validity was measured through construct, content, and concurrent validity. Construct validity was gathered during test development through the examination of response processes. For example, response frequency for multiple choice items was measured to identify common errors. Errors that occurred frequently were evaluated and revisions were made based upon scoring studies and feedback. Evidence for content validity is based upon the degree to which the test is representative of the behavior it is designed to measure. Self P2 measures language domains that are well documented in literature, so a group of experts evaluated the assessment for appropriate cultural and linguistic diversity and for potential bias. For concurrent validity, Several studies were completed to understand how CELF-P2 relates to the previous version and to other language ability assessments. CELF-P2 was compared to CELF Preschool, CELF-4, and PLS-4. In comparison of CELF-P2 and CELF Preschool, two out of three composite scores were highly positively correlated, and mean scores were higher for CELF Preschool than CELF-P2. In clinic, this means that children may score slightly lower on CELF-P2, but with little effect on overall decision. A comparison study of CELF-4 and CELF-P2 demonstrated that there is a moderate to high correlation between the two assessments, and a study comparing PLS-4 and CELF-P2 show a moderate correlation between the two batteries. Reliability was measured through test-retest reliability, internal consistency, and interjudge reliability. To determine test-retest reliability, 13 to 17 children ages 3 to 6 from various backgrounds were given the test a second time after 2 to 24 days by the same examiner. High correlation coefficients show that self P2 scores remain stable over several administrations. Internal consistency was measured using correlation coefficients and the split half method. The average correlation coefficient value for each of these measures was a greater than 0.77, meaning that the subtests measure the same construct consistently. To test interjudge reliability, self P2 subtest was scored by 8 raters, and a high level of agreement among the 8 raters, shown by correlation coefficients, shows that self P2 scoring is uniform across different clinicians. Self P2 can be administered in 15 to 20 minutes for the first three subtests to determine the core language scores. Time for remaining subtests depends on the child's age, motivation, and language ability. The administrator should have experience in administering, scoring, and interpreting self P2. The testing environment should be quiet, well lit, and free of distraction. Special needs should be considered. The test is administered as a verbal response to a stimulus picture. Before administration of a section, the administrator should demonstrate the task and present the trial items. Prompt after 10 seconds. Responses should be recorded verbatim, and if a child self-corrects, score the second response. 
Subtest includes concepts and following directions in which a child points to the picture in the stimulus book, word structure in which the child uses the targeted structures to complete a sentence, expressive vocabulary in which the child identifies an action, object, or person in the stimulus book, recalling sentences in which the examiner presents sentences and the child imitates, sentence structure in which the child points to a picture in the stimulus book, basic concepts in which the child points to a picture of a target concept, recalling sentences in context in which the child imitates sentences from a story, word classes in which the child chooses two related words and explains their relationship, phonological awareness in which the child rhymes, identifies, and blends sounds and syllables, the pre-literacy rating scale completed by the examiner with the parent or guardian about the child's literacy skills, and the descriptive pragmatic profile in which the examiner completes with the parent and guardian about the child's social communication. Scores can be computed using assisting software or manual scoring. For raw scores, each item in the subtest is scored on a scale of 1 to 3 depending on the test. Add the scores of all items in the subtest record form together for a subtest raw score. For percentile ranks, use table and Appendix E to convert the subtest scaled scores and composite scores to percentile ranks. For percentage scores, it is just the number of correct answers out of the total items on each subtest. For standard scores, use the table broken into age groups in Appendix C to convert to standard scores. And for age equivalent scores, use the table in Appendix D to convert raw scores to age equivalent scores. Self-P2 is not meant to diagnose conditions or symptoms, but it can help to predict diagnoses such as ASD or hearing loss because of the language difficulties presented by children in those clinical groups. Self-P2 is not a diagnostic tool. It's highly structured with few cues or supports to keep children motivated, there's no incorporation of gesture or play, and there's no articulation section or screening. When administering Self-P2, be cautious to determine the core language score first, prompt only when necessary, and do not reveal any part of the answer. Keep the child engaged by taking breaks, reinforcing responses, repeating questions, and maintaining an exciting environment. Be aware of and consider linguistic and cultural differences such as communication style and familiarity with subjects, and consider the case history, other analyses of the child's language, and clinical judgment in addition to scores.